Doctors had to perform plastic surgery and subsequent operations to repair his perineum, a.k.a. your taint, and uh, penis, which had become, quote, buried uh. by his extremely large scrotum. Um, but what was what's going? What was what was, in that, what was in there, man? What's in the scrub? What's in the scrub? What's in the scrub? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast, the only podcast keeping you from spiraling out into the infinite abyss. I'm your host, Daniel, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Ali. And the prodigal son has returned. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, you want to say hi? <laughs> oh, shit. Man, this is our first time all three of us on here. I'm pumped. Yeah. Me too. I'm broadcasting from the wing of a plane. So... <laughs> You're the thing on the wing. <laughs> yeah, the thing on the wing. <laughs> some serious, some serious background hum going on. Yeah. But uh, yeah. howdy, and uh, man, good to be on with you guys. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're, we're stoked, and we've got a uh, we've got an action packed episode to say the least. Yeah, a ton of stuff. Um, yeah, man. But uh, so, Ali, uh, we'll start with you. How was your week? Man, my week was good. Um, I'm really liking working again and <laughs> yeah. not feeling like a sack of shit. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, my, my coworkers are really cool and like I I'm really liking them and stuff. But yeah. um I started a bullet journal this week. I've uh, I've had a planner since like freshman year of high school pretty much nonstop, so that's twenty damn years, which is awful. But like I'm all in on a bullet journal. You basically just go from a blank journal and like make whatever things you want to make in it i've got all these different sections like i've got a section for like podcast notes and a section for like wait is that like an actual like is that like a style of journaling yeah like there's i mean it's basically just long bulleted lists and stuff but Mm -hmm. a lot of people make like daily charts to track shit so like i kind of track a little stuff like did i have coffee did i have enough water did i have a headache and i'm seeing how those are correlating (laughs) to each other which are obvious to how they're gonna be but (laughs) Um, oh, and I have this about this morning. Yeah, what's So that? I'm always late to everything and I'm sorry, but <laughs> I stopped at Starbucks and this, the, the line was super long and it moved really slow and I got up to the window and the girl at the window, she's just like sitting there, like kind of yeah. hanging halfway out the window and just looking like she's daydreaming. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's like, hey, <laughs> and I'm like. Uh, are you are you cold? She's kind of like curled up yeah. in herself. She's like, no, and she leans out more, and she like gets all like confidential. She it was the cutest thing. She's like maybe nineteen. Uh, I don't know. I'm bad with ages. Maybe she's twenty five. I don't know. Uh, um, but she's like, I just started talking with this guy, and I really like him. <laughs> And he just texted me and said he misses me. So I'm just... And I'm like, this is the cutest shit. I love you. It was so uh, wholesome. This is the night, the most beautiful night, I guess, morning. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, that's awesome. It was so Wait, cute. Did, did this person... She was working at Starbucks? Yeah, like, she was the person working the window. And I was like, are you gonna take my payment or... <laughs> For her, dude. Oh, it was so sweet. And yeah. she was she she didn't look like a cutesy, like girly girl. Like she she had a buzz cut and like a baseball cap on and, yeah. and like a septum ring and a, like she just looked like a little badass, but she was yeah. she was just falling apart over this boy and it was so sweet. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. So cute. Um well Joseph, how was uh how was I guess your God, honestly we I I feel like we hadn't talked in a hot minute. So uh you wanna <laughs> you, you wanna tell us what uh well, first of all, where are you coming from? Uh, I'm in L.A. today. Rock and roll. So, all right. Yep. Yeah. And the week was good, man. I good. appreciate you asking. Yeah. The week was good. Just uh, doing the damn thing. Just, uh, yeah. One step at a time. <laughs> Built a little business. <laughs> one day at a time, man. One day at a time. That's it. Uh, That's it. How was yours? God, dude, I good. I, we, we, we will be celebrating uh, Finn's second birthday on Wednesday, so... It's kind of fucking tripping us out, but uh, yeah, dude, it's kind of crazy. 
We uh we we showed him Footloose for the first time last night, and my God, that kid! I bet he danced so I, much. I was gonna say I will show you the video. I gotta see that after after we record. <laughs> but Joseph, I I think that some of them were sent, and you you got to see some of them. But uh, the the kid definitely. <laughs> He's, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna set some Midwestern town free. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know, I don't know what the timeline is, but that shit is, yeah. yeah. You better watch out, church elders. <laughs> he's, gonna he's gonna set that shit free. That's awesome. That is awesome. But, um, but yeah, it was a good week. It, uh, you know, um, uh, we're Megan and I both are looking forward to the end of uh, October. Just. Uh, First of all, Halloween. We love Halloween. Um, but uh, second of all, Megan has just been absolutely uh, working her ass off lately. And yeah, she's... I feel like I've barely talked to her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, but so we're, we're definitely looking forward to that. But um, but you know what? You know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you a stronger person. So, <laughs> but uh, anywho, um, which... This is a really hard turn, but <laughs> speaking of killing yourself, oh god, or whatever, Dude. but not, not not killing yourself, but dying from something. Oh. I'm gonna start off real good. We're gonna talk about a man that had a massive rotting scrotum oh. removed after avoiding doctors for decades. Oh. So uh, let me get this uh, article pulled up. <laughs> This was sent to me actually by Allie, but uh, yeah. she was like, you know what, maybe you should handle this since uh, since I, I have a, a medical, somewhat of a medical background. Um, also, but... maybe as a scrotum owner, you have more to <laughs> yeah. say than I would. <laughs> but this shit is whack. Oh. That that's how I'm going to start this uh, like thing off. We need I'm going to make a note. We need to tweet this out so people can see this cat scan because yes. it is wild. We, this this will probably be like used as the the teaser for this episode because <laughs> literally the the cat scan of this man's uh basically from about his um stomach all the way down to his knees and literally half of that uh, half of that distance is covered by the size of this dude's scrotum. Oh. Um, which I did this morning as I was going through articles and stuff uh, and eating a slice of pizza. You did not click that link. <laughs> I clicked the you link. Clicked the link. <laughs> <laughs> I clicked the uh, not safe for work link on here. And holy shit, dude. This guy... Oh. I mean, it, what it really reminded me of is the uh, the guys in in these like tribes in you know Africa yes, or yeah. South America or something. Yeah. You know that it's like what elephantiasis or I, I'm not sure if that's the. Correct I think it's elephantitis. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But um, uh, yeah, they it it looked like he had basically like one of those bags that you carry bowling balls in, <laughs> swinging between his leg. <laughs> His legs, and they they described it had it had gotten so his scrotum had gotten so big that they uh, doctors had to perform plastic surgery and subsequent operations to repair his perineum, aka your taint, and uh, penis, which had become quote buried uh. by his extremely large scrotum. Um, but what was what's going? What was what was in, that, what was in there, man? What's in the scrub? What's in the scrub? What's in the scrub? Yeah, like cause it, oh god, I'm, I, did so, they drain it? Oh, so no, oh. they just completely surgically removed. Okay, it. yeah, I oh. mean like the 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 surgery actually they it looks like they did a phenomenal job considering what they were working with uh, as but, a as a connoisseur of scrotal <laughs> surgery images. <laughs> But uh, but so what what ended up happening was this guy got a a parasitic disease mm. that apparently is caused by roundworms um, and it's transmitted by mosquito bites and it's called uh, lymphatic uh, phil filariasis. Filiaris you don't so, say. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude. So uh, just to give you a little uh, background on um, what what he was dealing with or whatever, um, and I'm just going to quote the the article. Uh, Once delivered to the body, the worms take up residence in the lymph system, 
causing inflammation. Though most infected people show no symptoms, some can go on to develop super fat sacks. No, I'm just kidding. No! <laughs> <laughs> Some can go on to develop <laughs> lymphedema or tissue swelling, uh, elephantiasis, aka skin and tissue thickening, and such scrotal swelling called hydrocell, which I believe that has something to do uh, with like water retention yeah. and shit. Um, left untreated dysfunction of the lymphatic system can pave the way for bacterial infections to set in. So basically this dude was dealing with uh, the elephantiasis of his scrotum. In addition to, he had like open sores on it and shit. And just like, it's pretty fucking gnarly, Uh. but, but they actually used this, uh, this case report to, uh, to publish an article in, um, I can't remember what, let's see. It was in Science Direct, so, um, but yeah, so, uh, kind of cool that they were able to, whatever, publish, um, I just closed the wrong tab, anyway. Uh, this <laughs> poor cool. guy, they're like, your sack is so far gone <laughs> that you're a case study. <laughs> yeah, the doctor, the doctor comes in with his clipboard, and he's like, pushes his glasses up, and he's like, sir, um, we're going to go ahead and diagnose you with, uh... Oh, with no. a fat sack, no. and uh, it's gonna have to be removed immediately. You notice how you have two uh, oozing sores oh. on your scrotum? Well, yeah, <laughs> you you could go septic. So um. I really like the uh, the intro to the article that that's sort of like giving an overview of his issue, and he, it, <laughs> it it hung past the level of his knees and had begun to <laughs> rot and ooze foul smelling pus. Mm. Mm. Here in the in the medical business, we call it purulent. <laughs> <laughs> but so just, that's, <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so God, you uh, can't take this guy anywhere, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, dude, I. Okay, I, I feel bad for the guy for being, like, such a great case medically that they're, like, doing studies on him. But, yeah. like, I, when I was a kid, when I would get strep throat, it would be so bad that they would be like, oh, this, like, the doctors would be yeah. pumped. They'd be like, this looks like, like, actually the images from my textbook that they yeah. use for examples. And I'm like, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Can I have some medicine? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Ugh. Oh wow, dude. But that that shit is gnarly and so uh bad. I would definitely recommend all listeners to at least check out the Safe for Work article from Ars Technica. Um but uh but anyway, Jesus, I don't even know how, where to go from Ugh. there. <laughs> Hey, I know where to go. Let's right. let's bring it up just a little, still vaguely medical, but uh-huh. a lot more fun. Let's talk about some blood lube. <laughs> Ooh, blood lube. I'm in. <laughs> oh, this was a good week. Okay, yeah. this this is the kind of shit I crave. To I want to cover this. Wait, real quick. Not the blood lube. The article. <laughs> Yeah. Just but to for, clarify, yeah. hey, if that's your thing, that's fine. But kink shaming is my kink, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you a hard time. Be, um, be sure before you go to the New York Post uh, article, get a tetanus shot. Get a tetanus shot. So. <laughs> Poor New York Post. Like, they cover some cool shit, but every time I go there, I'm like, this is it. This is the one that's going to just kill my whole computer and burn my house down. (laughs) Okay, so this couple who is in Florida, of course they're in Florida, (laughs) they are trying to create a lube that looks like blood. So thankfully, this is not actual lube that is actual blood, I mean. Yeah. Um, They opened an Indiegogo thing, and if their project had reached their 50,000 goal... The Tampa, Florida lovers would have provided donors with little syringes filled with a non-sheet staining, sweet tasting, dark red colored lube packaged into tiny little black coffins. <laughs> I kind of like the Dude, I would the totally buy it. Shit. Not to use as lube. Yeah. Again, if that's your thing, do your thing. But like, <laughs> I just want to have it. I want to take it to like the bar and be like, y'all, look at this blood lube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's in a tiny coffin. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, they just mentioned, like, kind of quickly in passing what their jobs were. The The woman works for Coca-Cola, which, I mean, maybe not for long. <laughs> and the boyfriend is a preschool teacher, which seems like a much too wholesome job for a blood lube startup entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So the guy said, so many people have that vampire fantasy to have sex with a vampire, Dennis tells the, the post. Mm-hmm. Why else watch shows like True Blood? <laughs> Dude, I watched True Blood. I, I watched like eight episodes. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody said how good it was. Me and my husband were watching it and we were like, this show sucks. <laughs> in, in all the ways. But like, <laughs> we were like, do you want to keep watching this? Because I hate this. And I was telling him about this, and I was like, you know, maybe this dude has a point. Maybe we didn't like it because we didn't want to fuck the vampires. So we weren't <laughs> the target audience. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so their their campaign only raised $1,400 of the fifty grand that they needed. Jeez, but dude. whoever wrote this for the post had some fun because they ended it saying, many remain thirsty for the product. I'm like, this guy. <laughs> this guy needs a Pulitzer. Yeah, right. <laughs> God, what a, what a failed Indiegogo, oh, man. man. Well, there's apparently there's people trying to get them to start it back up because they're yeah. like, oh, I don't know, I think you get more support. I've told some people, and people are in. <laughs> Jesus, dude, it's like <sighs> this is just this is the world that we live in. Fifty so. grand seems kind of steep. Like, can't you just host it on Etsy or something? Like, you need yeah. fifty grand well, to start that's, this up. That's the other thing is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I feel like you could do like whatever boot. I, you know, I feel like with the niche a niche product like this, yeah. you're not going to have widespread acceptance no. and buying and stuff. And I so. think that's their problem is they think everyone wants to have bloody orgies. Yeah, <laughs> which they they have a photo within the uh, in the article. It just looks like, like a Halloween thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's it's it definitely looks like they'd like to bang with blood, lube. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Hey, people are into a lot weirder stuff, and as long as everybody's safe and consenting, go for it. There you go. There you go. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Where do we go from here? Yeah, so, well, uh, speaking of banging... Let's talk about let's talk about Andrew Yang and Yang his Gang. Uh, Yang Gang. <laughs> um, so Andrew Yang was, uh, which if for the uninitiated, Andrew Yang is one of the nineteen, uh, yeah, nineteen uh, can- or nominees for uh, the Democratic uh, Party's. Um, well, I guess yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. For, for nineteen the... are left. There were even more, and there's been people drop out. Yeah, I, I just, I don't understand how there's that many. But I, I accidentally <laughs> watched the debates this week because I went to a true crime trivia, and they played the debates after, and I, uh-huh. I just stayed to finish my grilled cheese, but then I was sucked in, and I had to watch. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm in. Like, yeah. now I'm like, I'm going to go back. This bar was really cool. I'm totally yeah. going to go back and watch the rest of the debates there and stuff. And yeah. maybe, oh, so they, maybe like the election party and stuff. Like, it's like a, uh, like an event. They will them, totally kind of keep thing. it as an event because they, they had a pretty cool. good showing and stuff. And it was, yeah. it was pretty cool. And people were like pretty quiet. Like, people weren't just like yelling or anything, but yeah. they'd clap after good stuff. But when, when Yang said this, like, several people were just like, ooh. <laughs> like shots fired. No, even even in the video that they have yeah. linked here, you hear yeah. like people out in the crowd like laugh and yeah. stuff. But basically, what he did was, um, well, I pulled it from the this article from the Daily Dot. Andrew Yang upset porn fans with his criticism of Bing. So uh, basically, uh, Andrew Yang was giving a spiel on um, breaking up big tech companies, and uh, and he. Uh, basically said, let's see, um, there's a reason no one is using Bing, or uh, let's see, while discussing major tech companies and whether they should be broken up, Yang uh, suddenly blurted out, quote, there's a reason why no one is using Bing today, saying that competition brings out the best in Silicon Valley giants. Uh, and then he said, sorry, Microsoft, it's true. I think that's kind of goofy because like, you're trying to take a shot at, at Bing for not getting so much attention, but like, Bing's owned by Microsoft. They're yeah. doing fine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Plus, I mean, they just launched Microsoft Edge and, you know, everybody uses that. No, love, <laughs> love Edge. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so um, immediately on Twitter, he starts getting um, uh, backlash from apparently uh, porn lovers across the world. Uh, so this this TV writer Mike Drucker, who I'm, I'm not familiar he's with, he's a him. really good follow on Twitter. Oh, okay, he's gotcha. he's really funny, and he's like, he, yeah, he posts good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, so he 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 tweeted out, "Wow, I don't usually do this, but Andrew Yang is extremely wrong here. Bing is a great search engine uh, for porn if you're trying to find content across a wide variety of sites. Really sad to see him fuck up like this." <laughs> 
And then, like, he, he got hit up uh, by some other people. Uh, Andrew Yang just tattled on himself for not watching porn by slandering Bing. <laughs> which... I love the implication that anyone who watches porn first seeks it out on yeah. Bing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Love just, to ask Microsoft for I just big titty goth girlfriends to watch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's my thing is because uh, Allie and I were kind of talking about this prior to, and it's like it seems like people already know like the avenues for porn, and search engines aren't the avenues. Well, for and porn. porn sites, I feel like they have their own search engine, yeah. so you can search your shit on the porn site yeah. and get your results only on there. Exactly, but. Uh. Uh, so I did some uh, investigative research. No, I'm just <laughs> Watched a couple documentaries. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, he was uh, he was definitely getting uh, getting some shit on on the Twitter sphere from uh, random users across the board. So. See, I like this. This is just good. This is just good. Not fun, not man. clean fun, but good good dirty fun. <laughs> good yeah. dirty fun, man. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, we'll uh we'll go ahead and cruise on from that one. Um do we want to where we want to head from here? Yeah, and you had something that was a little bit adjacent to that and now I've lost The typo the... squatting maybe. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, cuz that was a little based on like uh search results and yeah, yeah. redirects. Yeah. This was this was actually really interesting yeah. and um Joseph, I don't know if you you'll have uh anything to add to this but but cuz I'm I'm not really that well versed in regards to like uh, web uh, web development and stuff like that, but um, but apparently there is a thing called typo squatting, and uh, this the these guys have decided to and I oh, let's see, uh, Photon Research Team uh, thought that it'd be interesting to look at typo squatting and uh, basically how it could affect the twenty twenty presidential um, election, so. Taking a step back, uh, typo squatting is basically when, um, basically what happens is if you were to go to google.cm, it, it would redirect you to Google, most likely, kind Probably, of thing. Probably, yeah. So it's, it's literally uh, like a letter or two off from an actual uh, legitimate URL. Yeah. And people will basically reg- register those URLs and use them for many different reasons. That's- yeah, like one example they gave was mm-hmm. ElizabethWarren.com, but you you left out the Z. Mm-hmm. And that one was actually nice. It, it has a picture of a cat, and it's like, hey, you mistyped this. Here's yeah. where you meant to go. Yeah. It's really sweet. <laughs> yeah, no. It w- and that's, that's the funny thing is because the, what they looked into in this is basically um, the different types of utilization for typo squatting. And they found that uh, about 68% were considered <clears throat> redirects, which to define like a redirect, it's, uh, it's basically when there's a typo squat that redirects uh, the user to a different website. Um, so, for instance, like Allie was saying with the Elizabeth Warren, but it's, uh, you know, like leave a Z out or use an I instead of an A yeah. or, or something along those lines. Um, a lot of the time, it'll just redirect you to the actual thing that you're trying to look for or whatever. Which that usually means the the, the original site Correct. bought the misspelling yes. so they would get that traffic. Yes, so. okay. exactly. So, okay. so basically... Like Facebook has... Facebook.com, yes. in case you mistype that. Yes, exactly. So, but the the problem is, is um, if these legitimate websites or companies are not able to get those uh, domains, uh, and I think I'm using the right vernacular, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, for instance, um, winred.com um, is, I think that's a, it's like a, um, it's a Republican yeah. uh Basically, it, it makes uh, donating to the Republican uh, campaign a lot easier kind of thing. Well, when uh, when you type in winrde.com, it actually redirects you to Act Blue, which is basically the Democratic uh, same Answer version. Answer to, yeah. yeah. And so, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's all sorts of stuff because they also have like, uh, for instance, my, my example earlier about Elizabeth Warren, but... Uh, using an I instead of an A in Elizabeth actually redirects to uh, Trump Pence, uh, a pro-Trump Pence website. 
Um, and then one one last example, Donald Trump dot digital actually redirects to um, to a Hillary Clinton, uh, a pro Hillary Clinton website. So basically what they wanted to to point out is just the fact that this this shit exists and um, it can be used even even more malicious than just um, just redirecting you to a, a competitor's website or something like that. They they actually uh, broke it down a little bit more, and they were talking about how um, you can you can basically do the same thing with extensions uh, and like Google Chrome extensions and stuff. And if you were to um, if you were to uh, download an extension and install that, then it would it would basically by by downloading the extension you're giving it um all the access all the access to basically uh shit that it doesn't need yeah for instance like uh you know like a something that's honey.com or something like that has an extension and and instead of it just needing access to like whatever uh you're viewing on amazon or something like that it actually gives you you know gives it access to your contacts and your you know this that and the other and just shit that's not relevant to the actual extension yeah and it's it's apparently uh more rampant than um than people really originally thought and so they're they're kind of just looking into it uh in regards to the 2020 election to see kind of like how people are almost weaponizing typo squatting, you know? Well, and also, how often are you half-assed scrolling through stuff and you go to a website mm -hmm. and it pops up one of those things and you just really click, like, just you just Continue real quick or hit go or yeah. okay or whatever because yeah. you're like, I don't know, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, I just want to read this article. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know how often I've, I, oh God, I hate when sites have their own notifications and yes. I accidentally hit allow. Yeah. So the whole time I'm on there, it's like, Stacy D in Delaware just bought a t-shirt. I'm like, <laughs> I, is this even real? Shut up. Who the up. fuck is Stacy D? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm already here to buy your t-shirt. I don't need Stacy D's influence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it was just kind of, uh, it was an interesting article um for for the the sole reason that it 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 is utilized a lot more than people originally thought kind yeah. of thing um i don't really know joseph do you uh you got anything to to add to this do joseph you, has have fallen you... off the wing <laughs> yeah. he's completely silent yeah yeah not not really other than it's it's just so interesting how the experience of the internet has has kind of peaked man you know it's like really fucking terrible these days you go to a website and it's like just nothing works you know what yeah. i mean you can't yeah. figure out if it's the right website you don't know who stacy d is like it's just <laughs> it's it's crazy man but yeah. uh yeah i mean that's i guess that's the definitely uh malicious use of that um of what you were talking about it seems like it should be something that you should watch out for yeah. yeah, for sure, man. And and honestly, it'll be kind of cool to uh, keep an eye on this and maybe uh, look into a post election, uh, see if see if anything comes out post election um, to see if you know if there were certain certain bad actors or something that that utilized uh, typo squatting and stuff. Which you can you can go ahead and check that box. <laughs> oh yeah, well, and that's that's the thing. We're we're talking about politicians here, so they don't really have uh, they're not really known for their moral compasses. <laughs> So. Yeah, I, I I definitely don't know the quote off the top of my head, but something came out from Zuckerberg this week saying basically, of course people are gonna lie in their campaign ads. That's just part of it, and you have to accept it. And somebody on Twitter like reposted that and was like, "Uh, no, we fucking don't have to accept that." Yeah, <laughs> says the man that sold all our data to <sighs> fucking Cambridge Analytica. Jeez, that guy is completely a He's robot. He's trash, he man. Looks, yeah. He looks dead in the eyes, man. It's scary. Every time Zuckerberg comes up, I that, think of the I water. Will, <laughs> the the always water. Always go to YouTube and watch the water drinking montages that people have made. They're <laughs> fucking incredible, and he is one hundred percent, at least partially robot. No, so. sir. I am here drinking my water just as every human does. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I require hydration. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> Let's see from typo squatting. Where are we going ahead? Hey, let's stay online. Let's talk about Yelp. Ooh, let's do it. I am. I. This is such <laughs> a good. I had to make myself stop reading this dude's stuff because there's so much of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
I, I titled this on my own notes, Horny Yelp Dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, what's the actual title? Uh, Yelp's horniest and best reviewer is a jacked foot worshiper named Fox E. <laughs> Fox has written more than 10,000 reviews for businesses across America in the last five years at the behest of <laughs> this this reads like a mad lip yeah. at the behest of a mysterious dominatrix who introduced him to bubble tea and baby oil. What? Okay, this guy sounds completely insane. And sure, yes, he is. But also, I love him. Yeah. Like, I am so in. So he yelps more than you can even wrap your head around. Like it said, he he averages more than five reviews a day for the past five years. What? I'm like, how much money are you spending, man? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he, the story's really cool. It's on Vice. If you just go to vice.com and search Yelp, I'm sure you'll find this article. Um, it's it's a pretty long read, but it's really interesting. Uh, so he was a musician and he traveled a lot. He was living out of his car. And just just making my, like making ends meet barely on like CD sales, mm-hmm. and he started asking locals to recommend places to him to like eat and to go, and he just kind of embraced it. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't doing anything with that; he was just going all these places. Yeah, and um, he <laughs> he eventually met this woman, and she was like, "You should start posting these on Yelp. Like, you should write reviews." <laughs> it's, it's so much. There's so much to take in here. Um, <laughs> So he's been to uh, over a thousand unique cities in America across forty six of the states. I just want to know how much money he's spending. Like I don't, God, I, I yeah. can't wrap my mind around that. Also, he's super into boba tea. <laughs> yeah, that's a, half of the pictures in this article. <laughs> so are much boba tea. of him with boba tea. It's amazing. So it's his business photography that really elevates him from chaotically good Yelp pervert and establishes him as a truly iconic internet person. <laughs> he writes poems and raps and limericks and they're all horny. <laughs> and <laughs> they're not almost all horny. I'm, yeah. I'm going to say like 98% are yeah. extremely horny. <laughs> um, there was a sample of a poem of his about a place called Boba Guys and one line mentioned a rhyme about his penis size. And another line said fertilize. And I'm like, this guy. Um, <laughs> this guy fucks. This guy so fucks. <laughs> uh, I looked at some of his reviews and they were like really, really good detailed reviews. Mm. And then he also gives you these bonus rhymes that are just awesome. And they all end with a double space down and then an all capital, no punctuation, what? Like, <laughs> like you hear rappers do. Yeah. So, like, every time I saw one of those, I just laughed like butthead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here are some sample rhymes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, this one's from a donut shop called OMGs. <laughs> Gardening with Dr. Watson, planning elementaries. If he's with his lover, then we do it in threes. The bathroom's always busy because everyone always pees, and I pee myself with excitement over OMGs. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, here's another one. Oh, that's um, awesome. Oh, God. A night with me can cause some bruising, which is why I win while they be losing. But if you're down in Charlotte and are kind of a harlot, then get bubble tea now from Tea Fusion. <laughs> Jesus. I'm, like, I'm hiring awesome. this dude for an ad campaign. I know, man. seriously. We need, to, we need to hit him up for some tether ads, man. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> he does review, like, random weird shit, too. Like, he, yeah. he reviews, like, entire cities. Does he does he have like a a blog kind of um, thing? Um no, or I think it's all just on Yelp, man. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Huh, okay. Okay, there's one that I that I made a note was that was not horny. <laughs> <laughs> I liked David Lee Roth more than Hagar, and a lot of girls dated Lou Bega, but when in Carolina, there's no sandwich finer than those gems made at Noda Bodega. <laughs> <laughs> so Basically, the way he gets uh, so much attention mm-hmm. is Yelp's sort of a social network. Yeah. So he gets a whole lot of people rating him as useful and funny and cool. Yeah. And Yelp relies on those review ratings to figure out which business photos to set as the one that appears in searches. Oh, wow. Really? So pretty much any city, if you search Boba Tea, yeah. you got this oiled up dude flexing <laughs> and holding some bubble tea. Yes. And I'm real sad I searched he's not been to Knoxville, but like, oh. maybe someday. Yeah, I did see a, a new uh bubble tea place uh 
Oh, what was it called? Megan mentioned it to me the I other saw day. one on Middlebrook because yeah. I remember the name was Hey Bear. And I'm like, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I hadn't had that much bubble tea. Honestly. Me either. I think I've had but, it like uh, twice ever. It's okay. Yeah. Megan, Megan like straight up loves it. But uh, <laughs> but no, this dude, this dude is straight up legit. Oh, and like, also apparently navigation apps bring in his pictures too from like. For like ads or whatever. Like, as your... I, well, like you can go to like Apple Maps and yeah. search like Boba Guys in, I think it was New York City. Yeah. And it's it's this dude flexing. <laughs> Jeez, man, that is so funny. His is a really cool story, though. Like, yeah. and he he just sounds like a cool. Like, sure, he's extremely horny on Maine, but like, <laughs> but yeah, he's, he seems like a good guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Jeez, man, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's nice to have news like that. It's just you know? fun, man. Yeah. And and if you go to his Yelp, it's like you don't even have to log in or anything. You can just look at his reviews. Mm. I don't even know how long I looked at his reviews because <laughs> they were so much fun. Yeah, yeah. that's all. Awesome. And they're useful too. Like he had like City of Miami Beach, and he had like lists of if you want this in the city, if you want that in the city, this is the best place for this thing. And Entertaining like, and informative. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Rock and roll, dude. <laughs> Um, all right, well, cool. Uh, let's cruise to, let's just knock out this last one. I, I'm, it's, it doesn't really have to do with boba tea and, and <laughs> mad flexing, but, uh, but I kind of just wanted to give it a mention, um, just because it was kind of bizarre. Um, you talking about your earbuds? Yeah, yeah, ah. the earbuds. So, uh, there's this company called Nuvana. And they are releasing uh, stress-reducing earbuds, and uh, basically they're available for pre-order. That's that was pretty much the title of the Engadget article. Uh, almost basically a native ad, but um, but I thought that it was kind of interesting because I was talking to Allie about it, and I ran into a buddy that I hadn't seen in a while. And dude had lost like a bunch of weight and was talking about like all these health issues that he was going through. And he had mentioned something about, um, basically about this tech that uh, Nuvana is uh, using. And it's this thing that he, which he said that uh, he did it at night, uh, like when he slept. But um, but Nuvana actually recommends like twice a day for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, what this is, is in these earbuds, they use a... Uh, they stimulate basically your vagus nerve in your body, which um, which kind of uh, has an effect over lots of organs, that, and and it uh, increases the the whole like rest and digest um, function of your body, and uh, so it's supposed to kind of also uh, have almost like a calming effect on you. Um, they. Apparently, this is like kind of a, a big thing because uh, I had never heard anything in regards to this stuff. I, I've definitely never heard anything about like anything like this. Like, yeah, I, I just kept thinking this was going to be like uh, noise canceling headphones. <laughs> yeah, well, and and that's the the kind of neat thing about it is like it it has this uh, tone that it can uh, produce to to quote give you a mild sense of elation according to the the reviewers or whatever from Engadget but um but you can also have it like incorporated into like the music that you listen to or something so that it's like almost subconsciously yeah. calming you and stuff and uh just really I don't know I'm I'm all about some like holistic uh medicine or whatever if if it's effective cuz you know placebos I want to I want to know if it's like a hum or like yeah. a, like a tick or like a I want I want to know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Joseph, you got something to say, brother? Um, yeah. What is the vagus nerve? Yeah. Yeah, I'd never heard of that. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. The vagus. Sorry, nerve. we didn't tell right, you guys to cool. prepare for takeoff, but yeah. uh, we're, we <laughs> yeah. are now in the air. <laughs> we we have we have moved through the uh, intro articles, and we are at cruising altitude. <laughs> you may now unfasten your seatbelts and move around the cabin. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! But yeah, so uh, the the vagus nerve, yes, that is that is what it's called. 
It doesn't really give a good, like, it just says that sends signals from the brain to most major organs. So yeah. That, that sounds it, pretty basic. Yeah, um, and, and and honestly, I, I should have looked into it a, a little bit more. You don't just know this? Jeez. I know, right? Uh, but it's been a hot minute since uh, <laughs> since I, I, I covered uh, cardiology in pharmacy school, so. But it was, uh, it, it, I know that it, it has something, the, the guy that I had actually spoken to uh, was talking about how... Like he he was like prone to arrhythmias or something, and it like reset his. According to this guy, it reset his like whatever heartbeat kind of thing. Didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, and I was just kind of like, Ugh. "That sounds bad. Like that yeah. sounds not good." It sounds pro uh, like arrhythmic, which is <laughs> not a good thing. Um, but uh, but anyway, so I don't know. If this works or not, um, obviously they they don't really have like studies and stuff. Or I I didn't see any uh, studies, and no studies were cited in this article um, over the actual like how effective uh, this this is. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I think I think four hundred bucks for a pair of earbuds is a little steep. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. But uh, but you know what, dude? Different strokes for different folks, and if it if it helps people, you know pinging a, a noise in your ear for 15 to 20 minutes twice a day then cool <laughs> man I'm, I'm not just playing on my phone i was trying to bring up this thing mm. i uh <laughs> i have a i use cast box to listen to podcasts mm-hmm. and i really really like it and i realized that they've got a thing called zen mode which i figured is just you know white noise background noise whatever so i started playing with it the other day and mm-hmm. it, it's pretty cool like you can you can layer like three different sounds like uh, I think mine just defaulted to rainy roof and fireplace pops light and wilderness. So that's, mm-hmm. that's nice. I like had that play. I was reading the other day. Mm-hmm. I go through and you can you can change out the sounds, and they're all like soothing, normal. You'd expect them. There's like various birds and mm-hmm. shit. However, <laughs> <laughs> this just reminded me because this whole like this is supposed to calm you. This whole you this know, is the this, ASM- this is this ASMR. Thing. Yeah, it's got some ASMR stuff, which <laughs> okay. is which is kind of goofy. Like one of those options was ironing, and I'm like, people seek out the sound of someone ironing. Like I don't know, that's but sure, okay, that could be calming. But there's one under human. There's ice skating. Okay, baby laughing. Fine. Children playing distantly. Children playing in a sprinkler. Then there's one called. Adult crawling metal vent. <laughs> what? Who they should have called that die hard. Right. right? Like, <laughs> who out here is being, oh, yes, I do love to relax to a sound of a dude in my duct work. <laughs> like, that I, is fucking what? terrifying. <laughs> And I can't listen to it because you have to, like, it's like a locked one that you have to have, like, premium to even hear. Jesus. I really want to hear it. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Sorry, this whole, that article made me think of it, and I was like, I gotta tell you about that. Yeah. Um, so, so I just did some uh, quick sleuthing online. Uh, so just, just, uh, this was from Medical News Today, uh, describing a little bit more about the, the vagus nerve. Um so the four key uh, functions of the vagus nerve are sensory from the throat, heart, lungs, and abdomen. Uh, special sensory uh, provides taste sensation behind the tongue. That's weird. Um, motor provides movement functions for the muscles in the neck responsible for swallowing and speech. And then parasympathetic responsible for the uh, digestive tract respiration and heart rate functioning. So I believe... Um, the Vegas last nerves one. out here doing work. Yeah, dude. Well, That's a lot. A lot, a lot of shit. The the human body is a fucking uh, treasure trove of uh, just cool shit, in yeah. my opinion. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it does. You know, maybe it helps and stuff. Because if if it actually does stimulate this, then it would make sense that you know it could maybe like. Uh, lower your heart rate and you know allow you to digest things more completely or effectively and oh, stuff so i don't know kind of cool yeah. but um anywho we won't uh we won't belabor the old uh nuvana's uh ear earbud things um <laughs> but if they want to send us some for free we'll so yeah, try them we'll out. try them out 100 <laughs> percent. but uh all right let's uh let's get kind of kooky mm-hmm. um Tell me about this uh, this Dutch family. Oh, God. Because this one was kind of a weird one. This Dutch family thing is all over the place. Yeah. And honestly, every article that I found was full of caveats of really? allegedly this or 
sources say this or we can't yet confirm this. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know how to make heads or tails of it, but I'll try. Okay. Um, if my notes will move at all. Okay. Now, I, dude, the New York Post like really fucked up my computer and I thought I was going to have to restart it just God. now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so take all this with a grain of salt, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, and mainstream kind of picked up this story a little bit, but mm-hmm. uh, I think it's definitely going to develop some. So we'll try to keep our ear to the wall for yeah. that. Is that ear to the ear ground? To the ground. <laughs> I don't know. Wall I'm out here creeping know. on the people in the next room. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to hear people crawling in back here, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, okay, so Dutch police are questioning an Austrian man after a family of six were found in a secret room at a remote farmhouse in the Netherlands where they are believed to have been living for nearly a decade. Fucking digest that for a, a couple seconds that's, that's a big plus that's a lot when this originally came out yep they were thinking that it was like the dad right so that's a big thing with these articles is like within the same article mm-hmm. on um what was that on on bbc mm-hmm. bbc is like so a dad and his five kids blah 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 and then like four paragraphs later it's like the man is not the father and i'm like but you just said <laughs> but you huh he's so, he's a dad of someone i mean <laughs> just not these two i don't know <laughs> so the guy's 58 the kids there are five of them they're now all adults so they're ages 18 to 25 mm-hmm. um their mother died at one point i saw that their mother died in 2004 but everything is so up in the air i'm not sure if that's for sure yeah uh the mother's definitely not in the picture she's definitely deceased yeah um the the man is 58 and has some sort of medical issues it sounded like he had a stroke a couple years ago and has been just stuck in bed for that long weird so like i mean i obviously don't know any of their circumstances yeah. but like so Nobody how was tried that? to leave for the last two years? Well, and so how how were they even discovered? Well, like... so the oldest of the kids, he's twenty five. Uh-huh. His name is Jan. He uh, visited a local bar, and he ordered and drank five beers. <laughs> I like that that detail is put in. <laughs> I love it. And the, the owner of the bar told uh, the local broadcaster, and <laughs> he looked confused. The bar guy said. He was unconfused. Dude, I'd be confused after pounding five so. beers. Well, especially, you know you don't have beer in your bunker or yeah. whatever you've been. You've maybe never had beer in your life. If you've been in there since you were 16. That's a good, that's a good point. Because um, they said a uh, decade, right? Yeah, they said nine. It was nine years. Oh, yeah, nine years. They gotcha. think. But okay. again, they, they can't confirm like any of this yet. And I, don't, yeah. I don't know if they ever will. Weird. Um. So when this guy showed up at his bar, he looked confused. He was unkempt with long, tangled hair. Mm -hmm. Uh, Somewhere else said he had a long, grizzly beard, too. Mm -hmm. Um, So the guy got talking with the bar guy. (laughs) And Jan said he had run away and needed urgent help and that he had never been to school. Then we called the police. So, like, okay, there's a lot to unpack. Well, so and even... if I've not seen anyone but the same other five people yeah. for nine years, yeah. and I finally escape, maybe I need five beers before I start talking about it. I don't yeah, know. For sure. For can so... you can you imagine that bartender, though? He's just like, how's your day going, man? You know, the guy's like, you're not going to believe this fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, you're probably as a bartender, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you've been you've been in a bunker for nine years, huh? Yeah. Okay, you want a sixth beer or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. no, it's 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 definitely interesting, and I hope they find out more. But I don't know. I don't know if the man is gonna be in any case to be able to discuss it, or if you'll yeah. get any sense out of him. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause there's you, there's also that talk that they were waiting out the end of the world. But then, <laughs> yeah, the, then that was all like, but we don't, that's, that's a legend. We're not sure if that was, yeah, there's. Dude, this takes like doomsday prepper to a new, like, uh, Man. new level. Did you ever see Kimmy Schmidt, the yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. I, I wish there was like a, a, a 
prequel to that because yeah. like i would like more of the dark shit from that <laughs> yeah. backstory yeah yeah dude, but i love that whole weird. concept but this this felt very kill me schmidt and like yeah. you get out and you just don't know what the fuck is going on just completely like fucking confused by society i mean being removed from society for nine fucking years yeah that's cr- and plus this is the uh, the other thing that I how did they get like provisions and shit or I mean, was it like a self sufficient like farm kind of thing? I mean, they said it was a remote farmhouse. Yeah. They found a hidden staircase behind a cupboard in the living room that went down to the secret room. What? It could be locked. I don't know if the man was coming and going, but if he had been bedridden for a couple years. Like, how were they getting food? Like, he if he wasn't going out and getting it, surely they didn't have that much stored. Dude, plus, what if, what if like, that, that farm or, ha- that, like, farmhouse went on the market and sold and somebody else moved in and fucking discovered, like, people living in this... Well, I canned some tomatoes. I guess I'm gonna go put them in the cellar. <laughs> the oh, oh cellar. no! <laughs> yeah. There's a whole family in here! <laughs> That's just so fucking bizarre, man. You guys pay rent, or how's, <laughs> yeah. how's this work? Yeah. Is this an Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Jeez, dude. But absolutely fucking bizarre. That's wild. But, um... And apparently the kids, as soon as... Well, I keep calling them mm-hmm. kids, they're adults now, but they, like, started posting on social media as soon as they got out. Like, <laughs> as soon as they got out. That shows you how powerful social media oh, is. Jeez. There was one thing saying... One of the girls, man, I lost the line. Uh-huh. No, here it is. Oh, no, it was the guy. His name's Jan. I kept thinking he was a girl. Yeah. Um, he began posting updates in June for the first time in nine years. Started a new job at Krekonat. <laughs> so the firm is affiliated to another company, and it was raided by police on Monday and belonged to this dude. What? So, like, how are you posting to social? That was yeah. in June. That's bizarre. Is that man. a cry for help? Yeah. Hey, I've been missing for nine years. <laughs> like, did you have friends and they just thought you moved? Well, that's. Yeah. I have so many questions. Yeah, that. I mean, that is just. I, yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I want to read a book on this. Like, this is. Oh, no shit. This is wild. No shit. Also, I really want to read that Peter Curtin book that last podcast was Ooh, talking yeah, about. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, that sounded. It sounded really good. It sounded a bit intense, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, where are we going to head from here? Oh, um, man. Above ground, for sure. Up, above ground, <laughs> my God. Uh, do we want to... I can I can do the the Hong Kong stuff. Yeah, you that's You want to do a, some Hong Kong updates? Yeah, let's get into Hong Kong. Let's do that. Um, all right, so... Uh, like we, uh, we, we had covered a little bit on the last uh, podcast. I believe that was the last one or the one yeah, before. Yeah, it was last. Last yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. Um, just trying to give uh, some uh, or shed some light on the Hong Kong protest stuff because apparently uh, Tether Radio is one of few uh, <laughs> news. Well, I don't know if we would necessarily be breaking news or anything, but we're breaking uh, you the news that we're digging up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, but it just uh, it's not getting like any publicity, and there's just a lot of strange things going on. Yeah. Um. Also, so, I wonder how much of it's getting filtered out that we're not hearing about at all because of... Ooh. Yeah, because it's... Ooh. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, basically, I'm going to start off. This is this is almost like a uh, three-parter, um, but uh, I wanted to start off with this article that I, I pulled up from The Standard, um, and it was, it was titled, Student, quote, Suicide Video Triggers Rampage on Campus. So this is kind of, um, I guess, a tangent to the Hong Kong protest stuff. Uh, basically, what had happened is there um, at the Hong Kong Design Institute in, I think it's pronounced uh, Tiu King Lang. Um, basically, what happened is there was a, a 15-year-old female student who was found floating in the sea Naked, um, naked, which makes it creepy. Which makes it extremely More creepy. More creepy. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Is they're calling it a suicide. And I just don't... I mean... Why would I, you get I naked? Why would yes. you get naked? And that's... that's it's weird. You know, it's, it's just... It's really strange. So, um, in regards to this, what what has happened is uh, they found her in this, uh, floating in the sea, and they were able to pull footage from, like, 
security cameras and stuff in the Hong Kong uh, Design Institute. Um, and it shows uh, kind of this girl's like last moments alive kind of thing. Because they obviously they're they're investigating this this uh, uh, suicide in quotation marks. Yeah. Um, so what happened was uh, people were like, "Well, wait a second. We know that you have this footage. We want to see this footage." Yeah. And there was a lot of pushback from the institute to not show this footage. And I mean, the you know they're talking about like the parents and um, friends and family and stuff that that wanted to see this. Well, so then they decided to uh, give in, and they they figured that they would show. Let's see, uh, after negotiations with the the protesters, the people that were wanting to see the uh, like CCTV stuff, um, the school said it would allow students and media to watch the video in batches, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Uh, on the the first uh, note. But uh, in one clip, a shadow, which the school claimed to, to be Chan, but apparently it's not like, it's not super clear, walks past a, a car park, but the timestamp jumps back from 57 seconds to 56 seconds. So it was kind of weird because it's like, basically, the protesters think that uh, the, the footage has been uh, edited or just clipped. somehow clipped, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, another uh, footage shows a female believed to be Chan taking a lift alone. And see, that's the, a, a recurring theme with all of this stuff. The The footage is not that clear. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, no, this is her. This is her, you know. This is and, her and we still had a doctorate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, the But then the school stops the, the, um, the video when the lift doors open so that you also don't get a... a good look at her because they said that they were they were uh <laughs> what, what was the other people would appear in the footage and their privacy should be protected yeah so it's one of these things that i you know i there's just a lot of weird shit now yeah. the other uh thing that's that's kind of strange about this student suicide is she was a very active uh activist in uh in just protests in general, and she was also very active with the Hong Kong protests and stuff. So there, there have basically been uh, a lot of uh, protesters that, when they were being shown these videos, they uh, they had kind of had their fill, and they're like, "No, we want to see the like unfettered, like fucking full version of this shit." Yeah, and got a bunch of pushback, so they just start like trashing the uh, Design Institute. And, uh, so, um, going, moving on from this, that was the first weird thing, uh, coming out of, um, Ooh. what's up? There was a link at the bottom mm -hmm. and it was kind of vague, but I clicked it and it is about <laughs> this. Um, the mother of a 15 year old student found dead at sea is pleading for people to stop looking into her death because she believes her daughter had committed suicide. Oh. Does she or do or, or is the someone speaking demand? into her? Yeah. yeah, God, man, I'm telling you that it's it's just weird. It's weird the 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 reach that and the um the power that that mainland China has mm -hmm. is is well we'll get into it a little bit more. Um, mm. So this is really sad though. It says um, her mom said that she had told her. That she was hearing voices and the voice was, you know, talking to her and she couldn't sleep. So she was exhausted all the time. So it sounds like she really may have may have had some and mental may, health stuff. Or mom might be making all this up. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But. I don't know. It's just, I guess it's, uh, you know, not not to don the tinfoil hat already. Hey. But, uh, but like Allie and I have kind of talked about in the past, um, there's really just not... A con there's no such thing as a consequence these days yeah. in the in the age of information it's it, most most if not all things can be explained you know yeah and so um so the uh the other thing just sticking with the vein of the hong kong protests uh we covered last week about how blizzard uh or activision blizzard had um had banned a hearthstone player Due to the fact that uh, during a post-stream interview, um, the guy had yelled out basically uh, some kind of pro-Hong Kong, um, 
whatever yeah. verbiage. Yeah. Um, Basically, and, viva la resistance. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so uh, immediately he was um, he was banned from the uh, from even playing Hearthstone. He was kicked out of the tournament. He had to forfeit any winnings that he had he had already uh, procured. And uh, Blizzard is kind of doubling down on all this shit and their stance on the, the Hong Kong protest stuff because Blizzard has a huge portion of uh, players in mainland China, yep. and they don't want to they don't want to mi- miss out on that uh, that market. Um, so they've gotten so much backlash. We were talking last week about how uh, users were trying to boycott. Uh, Activision Blizzard by deleting accounts or inactivating accounts, and Blizzard had completely taken away the function yeah. of it. You know, um, so they kept getting uh, basically the like hashtag boycott Blizzard uh, has kind of caught on, and Blizzard ended up canceling a huge event in um, that was supposed to go for Nintendo because um, basically the the uh, Blizzard property. Uh, Overwatch was going to be launching on the Nintendo Switch, and so they were going to have this big party because Overwatch is like huge, huge, absolutely yep. huge, you know. And so uh, they ended up canceling due to like all of the backlash that they've been getting from gamers. Um, in addition to that, they they actually uh, decided to step up their game, their banning game, and basically say, okay. During any streams for uh, like Blizzard games and stuff, even in the Twitch chat, if you say anything that uh, that is basically pro Hong Kong, you'll receive a twenty four hour ban. Um, that feels like censorship. It is. I. It is screaming censorship yeah. to me. Yeah. And so it's it's one of these things that like you know we we saw the stuff which we didn't really cover on uh on tether but the the nba uh um some nba players uh were had spoken out about uh being you know pro hong kong and uh they had just uh they had basically been silenced you know and um it's just it's been very interesting to see what kind of power mainland China has had over even the U.S. media and their coverage of all the protests and stuff. And uh, I think this is going to be an ongoing thing, and I, I really, um, I don't know. I, I don't know, you know, I, I, how, do you, how do you combat this other than talking about shit that you're not really supposed to be talking, or that, that they don't want you to talk about? And then they're just going to ban you. So well, yeah. Like- so really, they've got the upper hand for yeah, sure. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's just been. Uh, I'm surprised it's just a 24 hour ban. Well, and that was that was kind of interesting to me also because um, yeah, they they were also talking about how um, they had not really been that consistent with these these bans because like uh, let's see. And they 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 hearken back to uh, oh these these people it's not that they're pro Hong Kong it's the fact that our they don't want their platform to be a platform for uh, like basically politics and I I, I I I can't remember exactly what they said but it was something about like oh. Uh, let's see. Moving forward, we will continue to apply tournament rules to ensure our official broadcasts remain focused on the game and are not a platform for for divisive social or political views. Um, I love when people just in general say they're not going to get political, and I'm like, life is political. Yeah. Everything is political. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you really want to get into it, all your fucking opinions are usually somehow political. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you can't avoid being political unless you only want to talk about, like, I don't know, gardening or something. Like, <laughs> so yeah. many things have political undertones. Yeah, yeah. And and the, the other thing is, is that it's just, there, when you talk about politics, like you said, every, yeah. like, most things can at least be interpreted as a yeah. uh, political yeah. kind of thing. And and it, it is one of these things that you can't separate. You can't separate this shit. No. You know, it's just like when, but, but, but then obviously we're talking about mainland China and free freedom of speech is not exact. They're not exactly known for that. So. Not quite. No, no. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so 
I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I I kind of want to uh, keep up with like maybe the business end of Activision Blizzard and see really what kind of effect this has had. And yeah. if, if if people are actually if they're actually putting their money where their mouth is, yeah. kind of thing, and yeah. and boycotting, you know, yeah, which. I don't know. I never really got into the. It was. It's easy for me to to boycott Blizzard because I never really got into any of their properties. So. I'll never play World of Warcraft again. Yeah, exactly. I played it once and didn't like it. So did you? Oh, you actually played it? Yeah, I, I just I actually had a really good time with it, but yeah. only the way I was doing it because I had a good friend who was really into it, and yeah. he and I would like have like either a Google call or a speakerphone call. Yeah, and just like prance around together, and he was showing me everything, and I'm like. I will never get caught up to the yeah. level of doing stuff that you're at, and I'm just slowing you down, and I'm not yeah. that into it. <laughs> like, I was just having a good time because I was exploring a forest with a buddy of mine. <laughs> every every time I think about... Uh, like, actual war, I'm like, I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> every time I think about World of Warcraft, I think about Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Did you ever see that shit? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> That shit was so fucking incredible. <laughs> that, like, minute to two minute clip is just, like, went down in the, you know, oh the annals God. of time. So, but, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's been really interesting. And uh, the actual U.S. Uh, legislators have reached out. Um, so, to, to kind of uh, put a nice little bow on our uh, Hong Kong protest segment. <laughs> um U.S. lawmakers urged Apple to restore HK Map app used in uh, Hong Kong. So we did cover this a little bit yep. about the HK Map um, app uh, getting pulled. Yeah. And I believe it was... I want to get this right. Uh, oops, let's see. <laughs> Where was it? Oh, here we go. Um, they said that uh, it the app has been used to target and ambush uh, police, threaten public safety, and criminals have used it to victimize residents in areas where they know there is no law enforcement. Mm. I, I mean, maybe like have they? Yeah, and that's just saying that that's you my don't thing. have a way to fight. Yeah, that that's wrong. And the the other thing is is uh, Apple pulled this uh, Apple pulled this app after basically getting uh, a bad write up. In the um, the government run, like whatever, uh, uh, I forgot what the the actual um, media was, but it was uh, it was like their uh, their official the the Chinese Communist Party's official newspaper. So they basically got a a lot of uh, shit thrown at them um, from that, and Apple responded in kind by pretty much pulling the app, yep. kind of thing. So, Ooh, and on yeah. on the level of HK apps, and mm-hmm. we talked about Waze and how good Waze is. Mm-hmm. I just I scrolled by an article the other day, and I, I just pulled it up. Um, Google Maps is basically ripping off Waze now. Like oh, they're yeah? they're gonna start. Uh, they they just came out with this like two days ago. Yeah. Um, they're going to start letting you put, like, uh, traffic slowdowns and where you see police and stuff like that. No shit. Yep, yep. So Which Google Waze was or... really getting uh, getting some Waze backlash. Waze some help for that. Yeah, yeah. about so, that stuff. So. I'm surprised Google is uh, embracing that. But, yeah. I mean, people like it, you know? Yeah, and I mean, like, honestly, when, you know, when you're, you're crowdsourcing traffic information and stuff, yeah. people will find a way to fucking, like, you know, yeah. just, like, leaving comments and shit. Yes. It's like, unless... When you remove the user um uh the user engagement yeah. part of it people will fucking abandon it yeah you know because yeah. i mean like uh, hell i think we were even talking about how it was like fun to beep at people yes. in traffic and stuff <laughs> using the ways app oh but, it does uh, say that the ways feature and presumably the new feature on google maps makes no distinction between police that are running speed traps dui checkpoints or mm-hmm. simply sitting by the side of the road yeah. So yeah, like yeah, you can say yeah, there's a cop here, but like, unless someone clicks on it and reads a comment, I don't yeah. even know if you can leave a comment. I think, I think can you, you can. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I I remember um, there was one specifically uh, they were they were running like a speed trap mm. uh, between here and Nashville. Yeah. And literally, if you you know, it has the little police uh, yeah. head, and you click on it, and it's like, oh, hiding under bridge <laughs> or something like that. So, did you ever see that old picture that was like it was before we had the word meme? I think uh-huh. 
that was uh, one of those like billboard things that you like a marquee sign that you can change the letters on, mm-hmm. and it just sits right on the ground. And they they had put the letters on it to say, "Slow down, the cop sits behind this sign," <laughs> and you can see like the tail end of the cop car <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. So yeah, just. People are always going to look out for, yeah. you know? Yeah, of course. Nobody wants to let somebody else get a speeding ticket. Yes, Unless they're so, being a total dick. But. Yeah. yeah. So so basically, um, this uh, a bipartisan group of seven U.S. lawmakers, including uh, Senators Ted Cruz, Ron Wyden, and Marco Rubio, and Representative uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, they actually took it upon themselves to reach out to Tim Cook from Apple and uh, basically ask him to re- restore the app and everything. Huh. Um, they re- For this article from uh, Today Online, they reached out to Apple. Apple declined to comment. Big surprise. Um, and they, they also uh, separately wrote to Activision Blizzard uh, to ask them to reverse the ban on that uh, what was it, Blitzchung, um, yeah. the Hearthstone player. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool that uh, some people are, uh, you know, reaching out and trying to give some support to, uh, to Hong Kong. But like, yeah. let's be honest, man. I mean, big tech, uh, China, China, they, <laughs> China has their fingers in big tech, yeah. man. And uh, I don't know, Joseph. At, like you, you work, or at least you worked a decent bit in the uh, the the tech sector. Um, have you seen anything like kind of strange or whatever, like it, shit that's just going unmentioned and stuff in regards to the the Hong Kong protests? Yeah, and, give like... us the scoop. <laughs> 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 that's uh, on the spot there, man. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> not really. Not really is the short <laughs> answer, but it is kind of it is kind of cool how you know um, they're just so hyper organized. Um, with like laser pointers to, you know, obscure facial recognition technology, which is all around and all that stuff. But, uh, I don't know, man, this is like a, the whole Hong Kong thing is just such a crazy rabbit hole. You know, I mean, did you guys see like the NBA getting involved this past week? Yeah. 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 It's just really odd how groups like Blizzard and the NBA and, you know, whatever are reacting to Hong Kong. You know, it's just a, it's just a, a pretty pretty odd thing you wonder who's got the leverage but as far as technology goes i mean it's just a super young group of people that are protesting and they seem to have their shit together you know it's kind of cool yeah no it's it's super cool and uh honestly it's just it's it's unnerving i guess to to me uh to just see how how powerful china is and um what kind of reach they have over uh, the U.S. hell media and tech? Yeah. You know, it's just uh, kind of crazy. But um, but yeah, so we'll, obviously we'll, we will be giving updates. I would say probably on a weekly, if not uh, monthly, basis on yeah. the, the Hong Kong stuff. Even if we're just focusing on the gaming part of it, yeah. like it's 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 going to go on. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I mean, hell, if it you know if the gaming industry is receiving the the backlash that they are in regards to this stuff, you can only imagine what you know the the tech manufacturers and stuff are, are doing oh, yeah. and stuff. But um, but yeah, so. Um, so that has been your uh, update on the Hong Kong protest for the Tether Radio podcast. This has been Hong Kong Corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so where where do we want to head from here? Uh, man, let's talk about Harry Dunn. Let's this, do it. This poor guy from the UK. Let's do um, it. Maybe I'm just maybe I just missed this in the news because I was talking to my friend yesterday and she completely knew what I was talking about. So mm-hmm. I, maybe maybe it got covered and I just missed it, but. Yeah. Uh, in August, a 19-year-old in the UK named Harry Dunn was riding a motorcycle, and a 14 or nope, a 42-year-old <laughs> woman who's the wife of a U.S. diplomat mm-hmm. was driving on the wrong side of the road and hit him head on. Uh, he was taken to the hospital, and he died later, uh, like really soon after. Apparently, she cooperated with police at first, and then she pieced out, saying she had diplomatic immunity, and just uh, came back to the U.S. and has pretty much been in hiding. Uh, she's not been like out anywhere in public mm-hmm. since. Mm-hmm. Um, so officials have said they're exploring all opportunities through diplomatic channels to ensure that the investigation continues to progress. Uh, Sky News has said that the police applied for a diplomatic immunity waiver 
but the waiver was denied. Hmm. So that's kind of the backstory on this. Uh, yeah. This week, <sighs> Trump. <laughs> I try not to bring up Trump, but sometimes it's just too much and you have to. Um, so this week, Trump, this is the actual headline. Trump surprised grieving parents at the White House with their son's suspected killer. And the subtitle said, the parents of Harry Dunn refused the surprise meeting, which they described as a bombshell. So this was this week. This was Tuesday. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Harry's parents came to the White House in an effort to gain more support, asking Mm -hmm. that uh, Ann Sekoulis come to... uh, That's the woman's name, the driver. uh, Ann Sekoulis to come back to the UK for the investigation. Uh, The president met with the members of the Dunn family to personally offer his condolences for the loss of their son, White House Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham said. His intent was to do all he could to comfort the victims of a tragic accident. Well, um, apparently... (laughs) In meeting with them, he was like, by the way, do you want to meet her? She's in the next room. And the parents are like, they, uh, you, what? No. Like, we we are not emotionally ready for that. That's a huge... So inappropriate. It just feels very Maury Povich. Like, hey, your boyfriend's been cheating on you. The girl is backstage. We're going to bring her out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's all fun and goofy and trashy, but, like, this is just awful. And I just, I mean, not not to pull, like, the spotlight off Trump, but I just don't understand how, I I don't understand if, um, I guess that that we wouldn't have some kind of extradition, uh, stuff set up with the fucking uk yeah i didn't get into the whole i think we do but i think diplomatic immunity trumps all that yeah like i don't really get why diplomatic immunity even is a thing but yeah that's that's my question is like okay so you can because literally this woman you know i mean it could be seen as murder at least manslaughter yeah at least manslaughter. yeah Yeah, because whatever some kind of negligence kind of thing that ended in this kid's death yeah and she's completely immune from, you know, that, yeah. that it's just, I, that doesn't make sense. I to mean, me, like, okay, know? fine. Wave off a speeding ticket you got when you were in Canada or something. But like, yeah. this is big. Yeah. Joseph, have you heard anything about this? Yeah, I think, so I think the purpose of, of diplomatic immunity is, you know, you can be conducting business on behalf of your government and you can't be like surreptitiously charged for something that's bullshit. Right. So you can't just because, you know, for example, the, you know, the relationship between your home country and the country that you're living in starts to deteriorate, um, you know, a la Hong Kong or something. Mm -hmm. You can't be charged with something that's ridiculous and then that be used as leverage. But obviously this is like a huge fucking loophole because if you actually commit a crime, that may keep them from... You know, uh, diplomatic immunity may shield you like momentarily, yeah. but I I think that it is absolutely possible, and in this case, will probably happen that um, you know diplomatic like maybe you make it back to your home country, but that diplomatic immunity is stripped and that you're actually held accountable. I mean, it's yeah. got to be otherwise, yeah. it's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I I just don't see how you know what. What you described as diplomatic immunity makes sense. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking like, the whole, like, you know how some of these countries have very crazy, strange laws? Like, uh, Dubai mm-hmm. has, like, some really weird stuff. And mm-hmm. I could see you're over there, and you don't even realize, like, yeah. drinking alcohol or something is yeah. illegal, and you do it, and you get caught, and, you, and like, the U.S. is like, no, no, we're not, we're not going to let you get in trouble for that. Like, yeah. I feel like stuff like that, yeah, yeah. but... I mean, this is you, pretty somebody lost cut. their life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were driving on the wrong side of the fucking yeah. road. Oh, it's and like... that's another thing. Trump also <laughs> added that accidents like the one that killed Harry Dunn are common for visiting Americans because the roads are opposite. That's a quote. The roads are opposite. Does that not just sound like he's making light of it? I do. I don't even know. This fucking this, guy. It's just, it's one of these things that it's like, this is, you, you, okay, I drove uh, when Megan and I went to Ireland. Yeah, I we rented a car. Yeah, and I drove over uh, twenty one hundred miles Jeez. in Ireland. Okay, Jeez. yeah. How many Wrong people side? did you kill? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you lose count? Oh, and it looks like we're about out of time. No, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, the, the funny thing is, is how easy it is to fucking abide by traffic law yeah. because everybody else is. Yeah. Kind of thing. So it's yeah. like you see other cars doing shit and your brain just fucking works like that. That it's like, oh, I shouldn't be driving into oncoming traffic. I should be, be driving with traffic or whatever. So... I mean that is just um yeah yeah I, th- this this shit will will have to be fucking um stripped like like Joseph was saying and, and honestly I want I want to keep up with this one and I show the, show the god more uh information is going to come out about oh, this Oh and, and so. one last thing I did want to say about it What's up Um I saw another article on Daily Beast mm-hmm. that this is just a quote from the article Sakulis has apologized through her lawyer who issued a statement that said the press had been reporting this case all wrong. Quote, Anne is devastated by this tragic accident. No loss compares to the death of a child, and Anne extends her deepest sympathy to Harry Dunn's family. Um, mm. Look, I've worked for big corporate, and I've been told, don't ever apologize, because it implies that you're guilty of something. Yep. And that is sure how that reads. That yep. that reads like something you say at a funeral. Like I'm so but sorry I don't think for your loss. There's a question of that, is there? Of whether she did it? Yeah. I mean, because these news articles are really treading lightly. Like yeah. some. I mean, of them, they're written like that. Some of but... them don't even say her name. Oh wow! Like really? BuzzFeed, yeah. uh, one of their news articles was pretty good coverage uh-huh. and never said her name. I had to go to a different article to even get her wow. name. Apparently, the authorities have not said her name. Hmm. So I feel like that's all sketchy. Yeah, dude. But that whole thing just sounds so not genuine and not like I am so sorry I fucking killed your kid. Yeah. Like yeah. more like, ooh, accidents happen and that's rough for you. I'm thinking of you. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Like mm. hashtag blessed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude. That it, it's we'll keep an eye out on that shit because there is no way this will just get dropped. I I have a I have a sneaking suspicion that now I don't know how much news coverage it's going to get, but I have a sneaking suspicion that that this will not this will not go un. Uh, Un- unjustified, I guess, I or not, not unjustified, but the justice will be served. How about that? You think justice will be served? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, but I don't know. I'm hoping, but I don't know. So I mean, it doesn't necessarily sound like Trump is all about the justice. It sounded very, and the article said mm-hmm. this sounded like a uh, a TV show. Like yeah. it sounded like reality TV. Yeah, I and mean, they I, called I out like... Trump for being a former reality TV star. <laughs> Dude, I feel like just uh, politics in general in the U.S. have turned into, like, basically, whatever, Dancing with the Stars or something. Yes! So, yes. it's kind of a joke. But, uh. Uh, um, okay, well, cool. Um, do we want to... I feel like I kind of want to end lighter, right? <laughs> yeah. You want, you want to talk... You want to walk us through this asynchronous communication yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, I've actually got quite a bit good. on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, um, let's, let's knock that out. So this is on <laughs> this website. <laughs> this website, uh, it got some traction on Reddit this week. A guy at work actually posted it in our like work Slack channel, and I was checking it out, and then I, I explored the website a lot. And the mm-hmm. website is spelled D-O-I-S-T dot com. I had never heard of it. I'm, I'm like three, four, five tabs in, <laughs> and I'm calling it Doist. <laughs> In my head, you know, I'm like, oh, this Doist is a pretty good website. It's got some good work ideas and stuff, but, like just doping around. And then I realized they have a thing called the Todoist, and then I realized that the whole site is Doist, <laughs> not Doist. Now, full disclosure, <laughs> literally, we're going over articles on Friday, and uh, Allie's like, man, I really like this uh, asynchronous communication thing from the Doist, and I go, the what? <laughs> And I'm like, oh god, I feel like such an idiot. The Homest. <laughs> yeah, I have been calling it Doist. Also, it looks like Doist. <laughs> anyway, it's a pretty cool site. Um, yeah. This whole piece is kind of an opinion piece, uh, kind of talking up Doist as a company, mm-hmm. like thinly veiled and then pretty straightforward by the end of the article. Mm-hmm. But it's still really cool. Um, yeah. So the the headline is. Um, Nope, I didn't copy the headline. But it's about it's about asynchronous communication and mm-hmm. why remote workers are actually more productive than people going into an office. Mm-hmm. Uh, simply put, asynchronous communication is when you send a message without expecting an immediate response. So the example they used is you send me an email during the day. 
I open it and reply to it a few hours later. Mm-hmm. Um, in person communication is synchronous. It's an immediate back and forth. So digital messages is like on Skype or Slack, any kind of an instant message sort of thing mm-hmm. are usually instant. Like you see that notification light up or you hear some sort of little blip, you mm-hmm. check it, you reply right then. And people expect that. Mm-hmm. So you don't send someone an instant message hoping that they'll reply to you in three hours. You send it hoping they'll reply in 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And this whole article just talks about how we're so dependent on that and we're so used to that that we use it even for stuff we don't need to. Even Mm -hmm. for stuff that you could have waited and asked them four different things in one email and then reply when it's convenient for them Mm -hmm. instead of a constant back and forth I am all day. Yeah. Um, He made a point that many people treat email the same way too. And there was a study from Yahoo Labs in 2015 that said the most common email response time is two minutes. Holy shit. Isn't that wild? Yeah. God, I'm I'm like... Well, <laughs> let, me, let me put it, if you want an immediate response from me, don't email me. <laughs> let me put it that way. I think but. a lot of people our age are that way, like about like even texting. Like yeah. most of us either we reply within 10 minutes mm-hmm. or it's going to be three hours. Like yeah. it just is like, no, I just no may not. Yeah. Thing. You know? And, yeah. and a lot of us, like I, I've got multiple friends that I'll have a back and forth text conversation for an hour yeah you know it might be a hundred messages we might be having i might be telling you one thing and you telling me another thing and us responding to that and having two conversations at once and you know how we all do yeah yeah for sure um but yeah this is really cool and uh it talks about a lot of workplaces are set up to where employees just have all these meetings during the day and then there's time in between when you're trying to get actual work done you're also keeping an eye on your email and your slack your skype your whatever your messages Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, This constant communication drains people mentally, it makes it hard to focus, and it makes meaningful progress on work harder to come by. Yeah. Especially, they talk about what's shallow work, which is more like sorting through emails, Mm -hmm. doing stuff quickly, making a phone call, and they talk about deep work that is actually writing, programming, coding, yeah, anything you really need to think about and you can't do in 30-second bursts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, And having more of this nonstop communication causes more stress in a whole bunch of different ways yeah yeah. uh they had a quote pulled from an office worker who said i used to wake up turn off the alarm and check tinder now i wake up and check slack yeah this uh this little uh whatever the metrics about slack the the average slack user sends an average of 200 messages a day yeah oh my god and that uh, ascending over a thousand a day is not unheard of like not even rare like, that's Jeez, pretty common, that too. Is, that is crazy, man. So, it pretty much says um, there's a benefit of asynchronous communication mm-hmm. in that you're not just immediately replying to someone. You might be snippy. Mm-hmm. You might word something wrong. You might agree or disagree to something too quick. Like, yeah. Whereas, if it's an email or something that you can answer in your own time, you're going to have the time to think about how you're answering it mm-hmm. and to word it better. Just to just to have a better reply in general. Yeah. And also, yeah. if someone says, "Hey, can you commit to this project? It's due by noon. It's nine o'clock. Yeah. It really should take six hours to do." And you're like, oh, "Okay, yeah." <laughs> you're like, "Shit, what did I just agree <laughs> to? This can't even be done." Yeah. 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 Which um, I, yeah. I've actually talked to Megan about this a decent bit because uh, Megan's able to to work from home uh, uh, three days a week. Yeah. And dude, she she says. All like all in all, she is one hundred percent able to get more stuff done. Yeah, being being at the house or whatever, just because um, you don't have people that are just like popping by your cubicle yes, that's or a huge like thing. whatever, and and yeah. constantly your train of thought being broken. You know, yeah. and like this this asynchronous uh, communication stuff. That's that's what you're doing when yeah. you've got an IM window up and yeah. like you know you're getting pinged by people and yeah. stuff. So. Um, just really, I, I thought it was a really interesting, really interesting uh, findings. I guess it's really cool. That stuff, so and it's neat. Like I've, you know, I've worked remotely. I've worked in the office. I like to go in the office. I just, I like that feeling, or at least to go out of my house. Like I can work from a Starbucks. I can work. I can yeah. work from a bar, but some companies frown on that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, I mean, I just like to change up where I'm. Even where I'm sitting, like in my office now, people, you know, we've got like couches and stuff and people will go sit on those regularly just to change up the damn background, you know? Yeah. And yeah. 
but yeah it's good sure. and and it also depends on like the culture of your office and just the dynamic of everything and whether people are just dropping by your cube or your office and just being like, hey, and you're like, ah, oh, it's this fucker again. Yeah. I can't get anything done. Which I, I've actually had some uh, pretty good discussions with another one of my uh, buddies that um, I, I won't n- mention his name, <laughs> but uh, he was just talking about how um, like he likes remote work. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, he likes going to the office too, like yeah. you, you said. But it's almost like a structure kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I having like having that structure a... to my day. Because if I work yeah. from home, I usually, I don't shower till I take a lunch. Mm-hmm. I'm in my pajamas all morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm just not really like as with it. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know. I mean, it depends. Like that, I was doing that more when I was like riding in my last job. Mm-hmm. And I can ride in pajamas just fine. Like I'm yeah. still getting riding done. But it's just a... I like having that structure to my day. Well, and I think that another thing is uh, just kind of the generation that holds the uh, the higher up positions currently. Yeah. As they get phased out, yeah, we're going to see a complete overhaul with yeah. how businesses are um, businesses are run. In my opinion, it's just, it's nice to see people realizing the shit that doesn't matter that's been focused yeah. on so long. Like, yeah. I have tattoos, and I interviewed for a place, and they were like, "We need you to cover all your tattoos." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't want to yeah. do that." I'm, like, uh, I think this interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like, wait a I, second. You have tattoos. I can't have you on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but yeah, like um, it's it's so goofy. Like some people have such strict dress codes and stuff, and they'll, they'll have like restrictions on like how many piercings you can have in your ears. I'm like, how the fuck does that affect my job? Yeah. Like I don't even see customers. Like yeah. what? Yeah. I, uh, I, and and I, which you mentioned a really good point. Like whether it's like a uh, customer facing versus yes. like background yeah. kind of yeah. uh, behind the scenes stuff or whatever yeah. i get that that you would want like a cleaner business face sure. kind of thing but but there's like also said, the, the movement of people realizing that clean doesn't necessarily yes. mean untattooed and unpierced 100 oh, <laughs> percent. you can be clean and still be like modified oh yeah totally 100 <laughs> percent. i feel like the 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 line is that's drawn is like the 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 horn implants sure yeah i mean <laughs> when you get really weird <laughs> But no, I mean tattoos and piercings, yeah. like dude, that is that is not I don't think it's quickly becoming the norm. It is the fucking yeah. norm. Yeah. Or even so. weird hair colors. Like I've worked at places that say like you can't have non natural hair colors and I'm like, how does that harm anybody? Yeah. Like who cares? Yeah, that's bizarre. And I so I think we're just moving to we're realizing like so many things don't impact your work and yeah. don't like Yes, if you have horn implants, people are going to have <laughs> trouble getting a serious answer from you or yeah. being able to focus in meetings and not sit there and be like, do those hurt? Do they hurt all the time? Why yeah. do you have them? Like, <laughs> yeah. Unless you work at like the Halloween store. Sure. So. Yeah. Then you're going to fit right in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Hot Topic would be like, oh, you're hired. Like, you just walk in. They're like, you're here. You're. Can you be a manager? What days can you work? <laughs> can we display items on your horns? <laughs> No, just uh, but yeah, this, uh, uh, this article it uh, it also really like talked up Duist a lot too, and they sound mm-hmm. like a cool company to work for. Um, and they said that they uh, they will reimburse people for working in co working places. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you know much about those, um, like the workspace kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like you you can like rent a space in like an office mm-hmm. to do especially I think joseph's actually yeah uh, done joseph haven't you uh rented spots in in like the the like com- whatever the common work workplace places or whatever i can't remember what they're called yeah yes as a matter of fact i'm headed to a we work in about uh WeWork, 20 minutes yeah. Cool. oh yeah rock and roll i mean has it been like a, a good experience um I don't, I don't know. Kind of. I mean, it's a good, <laughs> I agree with Allie. It's good. To, it's nice to kind of break up the work day a little bit. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like really distracting if you're there for a while, you know, it's a little really? tough. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Well, yeah, I think that I, I just think that, you know, with, with the, the way that, uh, just business is evolving and just like images and, and stuff or, uh, or I just even think that it's a lot of offices are going to where you don't have to work eight to five. Like yeah. you need, and like that flex was hour kind of yeah. Shit. And yeah. that was a big thing on this article was they don't they they were really stressing how much they don't care 
how many hours you work. Mm -hmm. So not even that you have to get your 40, but split it up however you want. Mm -hmm. But they're just like, you have to get your work done. Which different jobs won't work for that. Like some jobs, you you are an hourly or you do need to aim for those hours. You have to be on call or something or whatever, you know, so... But yeah, um, it's it's cool to have that flexibility. And like one thing, the guy that wrote it said, I spend an hour every morning with my son and no one even notices because yeah. I work remote anyway. So they yeah. don't even realize I'm not answering stuff for an hour. Exactly. So exactly. It's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, uh, I mean, I think that's where we're headed. I think you so. Know? I really I think do. So. My, my best friend works remote uh, uh, one or two days a week and she gets so much more done because people don't just pop into her office. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, I am glancing at the time, and I believe we have arrived. <laughs> um, so and now it's uh, time for our little uh, social jingle for uh, episode 71 of the... Oh, wait, but we are on wait. Spotify. I meant to say that at the oh, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah for we sure. We are on for Spotify, sure. and we are out there, and you can... Just subscribe to us all the fuck all over the place. Yes, we're everywhere. And send us uh, send us some criticism. Send us the send us what you think about the the Hong Kong protests and what uh, effects they have had on the U.S. And, yeah, uh, send us weird shit you want us to talk about. <laughs> exactly. I mean, shit, dude. We covered a rotten scrotum at the beginning of the show and blood lube <laughs> and blood lube. What a time we're to in... be alive. <laughs> yeah, what a time to be alive. Uh, oh, it's fucking awesome. But uh, but yeah, let me let you know where to send this stuff yes. uh, we can be reached at tetherradio at gmail.com that is t-e-t-h-e-r-r-a-d-i-o at gmail.com we are on uh, Jack Dorsey's Twitter sphere uh, at tether underscore radio we are on Instagram at the same handle at tether underscore radio uh, we're also on Facebook uh, tether radio all one word I believe Ali is working on something with facebook i made a closed group but uh really haven't done much with it yet but if you if you apply to it i'll let you in (laughs) (laughs) yeah man we want want to get some discussions yeah we'd love that uh, that'd be that'd be super fun but uh but yeah so uh joseph you got anything to add brother no (laughs) 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 all right rock and roll man um, all right, well, uh, this has been episode 71 of the Tether Radio Podcast. I'm Daniel. I'm Allie. And uh, Joseph Joseph is saying hello from the porch in L.A., man. <laughs> uh, dude, thanks for thanks for joining us this time, man. Hope, hope you can be uh, getting back on here on the reg. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, rock and roll, man. All right, well, this has been uh, episode 71 of the Tether Radio Podcast. Thanks for lending us your ear for about an hour and a half. And, uh, yeah, man, we hope you guys have a great week and look forward to talking to you next week. Take it easy, guys.